Okay, today we're going to look at a fun app. It's a little app that allows us to doodle on the screen. I'll be very careful. I'll hand it to you so that you can look at it and play with it, but I'll also take it away because I know these kind of apps, I love them. I just spend hours. <laughs> There's a neat one here that I, I downloaded just for the heck of it that is more extensive than our doodle app. Oh, wrong tablet. Never mind. It's not on this one. Okay. All right. This is like a standard little edge of sketch here. Or we can draw. We then have a menu. Touch the menu. And we can change the color. Standard sort of RGB, where we can set the red, the green, and the blue. And we can control the transparency of it. So if you notice there, we can sort of see the black underneath that. We can specify the line width. We can clear and we can save image. So
this is the other drawing one that I downloaded. One that does spinning art like that. occupied for hours at a time, you know. Well, that one I know I, I have one like that on my dog, because my granddaughter plays with right. it. She comes in and sets all these colors and all right. the shades. Right. And it, it kind of interesting, but then there's one that also has kind of like the coloring book page as the background, but you can come in and set the color and change mm -hmm. uh, the color, even going in and creating your own new colors. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But yeah, it keeps them occupied for hours, but that would really float the mind. Yeah, really. All right, let's look at this and let's see what is different. I am guessing we're finally going to see something different in the Android Manifest. What do you suppose we're going to see in the Android Manifest? Any thoughts? Remember, what's typically in there is permissions. And if you notice... Um... I lied. I guess I don't see the permission for that. I thought uh, we would we would get uh, have a permission in there because it, it uh, saves your image. You can save your image. So I thought somewhere in there there would be a permission based on that. There is something that you can do. Notice that. There is, there is something in here that I don't recall we've seen before. Associated with this activity is the orientation of portrait, which means that typically most Android applications change themselves as you turn the screen. So the application orients itself either landscape or portrait. Whereas this application, if I draw, it stays in portrait. So it doesn't matter if I turn it or not. Oops. All right, here's something else I forgot about. I shook it, it asked me if I want to clear it. I saw that. You did? Yeah. When I went to take it to him, it right. was, you want to clear or erase? I'm like, yeah, I, I think that's inspired by the old etch sketch right? Or is, if you're done. So, this takes, this, this is another uh, new aspect of this application is that it takes into account the internal accelerometer, which knows if it has been moved. And so we'll see that. That's one thing that we'll see uh, throughout this. The other thing with this is obviously because it's a drawing program, it, it deals quite a bit with the canvas and the canvas um, that uh, will be used to, to change what the screen looks like. The other thing, I don't know if you noticed it or not, is... Actually, oops, this does multiple drawings. So if I, I use multiple fingers, it will give me multiple lines. Like that. All right? So that's another feature of this. Um, means that it is handling uh, multiple gestures at the same time effectively. Right? as opposed to just one touch or whatever. It's keeping track of a multiple of things. So let's go and look at what is in here. Again, the manifest, I, I thought for sure there'd be something about saving a file in here, but I sure don't see it if it isn't there. All right, so nothing to see there. Let's look at our resources. Not much terribly new in there. There's our strings file, which has the strings that are used. Nothing earth shattering. There is our main XML, 
which only consists of our custom view. You'll see that more and more in the, the applications as we go on later. Rather than having a view which um, you know has a lot of stuff on it, a lot of these sorts of applications where you're like the, the spot on application where you had spots moving on and you could tap them and so on. A lot of them are taking advantage of our custom views. So we create a custom view here called Doodle View, and that's really what the whole screen is. We then have two XML files for the layout of our menus. All right. This one is the with dialog. And the one thing that is different about this is that it uses a seek bar. All right. Not sure if we've used a seek bar before, but that's a little slider that you can slide back and forth to uh, indicate how wide you want it. So instead of typing in a number for a width, you can slide the seek bar. Look at the. All right. Now notice something else. This image here that shows you how wide the line is going to be. That has to be responsive to two things. It has to be responsive to the color that we set it for. So I set the color on this guy to light blue. And it has to also be responsive to the width. So if I change the color or change the width, that image has to change. So that little image up there is actually generated dynamically. Now, in the layout, it's this guy. This is the image view. In other words, this is the sample of the line that's going to be drawn um, based on the width that we set and based on the colors that we've chosen on the other screen. So this XML that we're looking at here is a dialog for the um, width. Have our image that shows us a preview of what it's going to look like. Have our slide view, or seek bar rather, which um, has a maximum width of 50, maximum value rather of 50, so that we can only set the maximum width to 50. And then finally a button to go ahead and um, make it so. We then have a color dialog, which is also an XML file that looks the same. Um, it is a um, table, however, because we want this dialog, instead of being simply a linear thing, we want this to have rows and columns. So we have choose color. We then have a seek bar for alpha that determines how transparent it is. A seek bar for red and for green. And then finally, we also have a preview, just like we did with the width and a button. So here are all the seek bars for alpha, for red for green, for blue. And then finally, we have actually a linear layout that starts out with a color of white that we're going to dynamically change the color for. So we sort of take um, a different approach with this than the, the, the preview of the width. The preview of the width, we actually draw a line that's as wide as we want it to be. For this, the, the preview of the color is, this is simply a little linear uh, layout here that we simply have configured to have a background color. And we, as we slide our sliders back and forth, we change that background color. All right. Let's look at the source here. Again, we 
have our activity and we have our custom view. The activity, my guess, is there's not going to be tons of stuff in it. All right. Of course, I've been wrong before. I forgot about all the menus in here. In the view, or I'm sorry, in the activity, there is, in a nutshell, two things going on. There is setting the listener for the accelerometer. The accelerometer, again, is the, the device or the, 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 the piece of hardware that um, can tell if it has moved. Uh, specifically, it can tell if it accelerates. In other words, if you were, um, you know, if you move it very rapidly, it went from stationary or having zero velocity to whatever velocity you move it in. So it accelerated pretty quick in which case the accelerometer would detect that. If, however, let's say you were on a train going 120 miles an hour, if you stayed at 120 miles an hour, you're moving, right, but you're not accelerating. So, therefore, the accelerometer wouldn't detect any changes. So, um, again, that, that's how that part works. This activity, the code in it does two things, and, and we'll look at each of those. Um, again, most of the work is related to the view itself. In the activity, there is setting the listener to handle the accelerometer and its changes. In other words, handling the event of the thing moving rapidly, or accelerating rapidly, I should say. The other thing that's in here is the handling of all the menus all the menu options, all right, such as setting the thickness and, and so on down the line. All right, so, first part of it is to initialize some of our instance variables. We initialize a doodle view to point to the custom view that's associated with this. Again, this is pretty standard stuff. We then set some initial parameters on the accelerometer. The, 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 the thought is that we're not accelerating. We initialize it at zero. And the current acceleration and last acceleration simply matches the gravitational pull of the Earth interesting that that apparently is recorded by the accelerometer because that again it's, it's you know it's been a while since I had physics but I think you know there there's constantly a force pulling everything towards the center of the earth and uh, a force applied to a certain mass means that there actually is a change of velocity because it's uh, whatever I don't know In our case, though, we're enable the accelerometer to listening. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to set the objects in place to handle when this thing shakes. So, what are we doing? First thing we do is we... set our instance variable for the sensor manager for this. We then set to register a listener with that. In other words, okay, we, we, we now have put 
the accelerometer on alert that something may happen. We've created an instance variable that corresponds to that particular sensor. We're now setting the code of what we want to do when that sensor kicks in and does its thing and notice or detects that something has happened. And what we've done is we've created for that sen uh, sensor manager, we've associated with that sensor, an event listener, which is a class down here that we have the code to look at and do some math to determine if this is accelerated or not. Again, this is a concept that sort of holds through from the earlier examples. All right? In the earlier examples, we associated a listener with a view. And when certain activities happened on that view, that is if you clicked them or tapped them or um, flicked your finger over them or whatever, then certain things happen. We have to have some code to go and handle that. So we have code that listens for these events and then handles them. Here we're not talking about a view that we want to write code for. So we're not doing this when you tap on the screen or doing anything like that. So it's not the view that we're interested in. We're interested in one of the internal sensors, the accelerometer. So we associate a listener with that to say, hey, when something happens that this sensor notices, call this code. So when this sensor notices a change of acceleration, it first makes sure that we're not in the middle of a dialog box. So if we're looking at a menu, we can shake it as much as we want and nothing will happen. But if we're simply in drawing mode, if we shake it, oops, then it will look and it will get the values for x, y, and z. All right? Remember, we exist in a three-dimensional space, x, y, and z, if you will. In other words, each, each point on the Earth has a latitude and has a longitude, and it also has sort of like the height above or below sea level. So that's sort of the three coordinates. So what we're doing is we're grabbing those three coordinates. All right? One thing I try to do when I do this is to show, sort of show common themes to reinforce this so, and to make you more adaptable as you look maybe to other sensors in this. But remember that just like when you touch a view, that listener gets sent an event. That listener gets sent information about what exactly happened. Same thing with the accelerometer. When its listener kicks in, when it detects that there has been something that happened, and that there's been motion, this on-sensor changed event, which will kick in because we've assigned this listener to that sensor, gets past an event that has information about it. All right? So we move it. It gets the values for X, Y, and Z. It does some math to get some value for acceleration based on those. It then compares this with the acceleration threshold. Why does it do this? What, what, would, what would be the potential issue if it didn't have that if statement in there? Any thoughts? remove that statement, but we'll play with some of the numbers in it. I'm going to 
could change this from saying if the acceleration is instead of greater than acceleration threshold, I'm going to say greater than zero. All right. Let's see what happens. What's happening? Even the slightest movement it interprets as a shake. All right. So what they're doing in here, what they're doing with this line of code, is they're trying to distinguish between the fact that it's impossible to hold that perfectly still. You know, even touching with your fingers, I will move it just slightly, and truly a shake where you want to clear it. So what they have is they have defined a constant called acceleration threshold, which has a value of 15,000. Now, I don't know what that means. You know, you could probably look up in the specifications of, of this class and it would tell you what that means for an accelerator to return that. But effectively, what this is doing is this is setting the sensitivity. In other words, how much do you have to shake it for it to, to count, all right, as a shake, as opposed to just, you know, incidental movement back and forth. So that's why we have that line in there. We're looking to see, hey, is this really a shake or did maybe they just bump it a little bit? All right, and if we remove that, then it's going to think we've shaken it um, even if we haven't moved it at all. I guess my point is, is this is sensitive, all right? So when you're writing code for the accelerometer, um, you want to make sure, how do I want to put it, you want to make sure that you sort of fine tune it and not just look for any sort of motion. Because even the slightest motion, it's going to register. All right? And therefore, you probably want to make sure that it's a significant enough of a motion for it to count. And so that's why we have the acceleration threshold. So, if it is greater than the acceleration threshold, let's run this again. If it is greater, let's see, I can move it a little bit and I don't get the air. Not the air, but the message. But if I move it more than a certain amount, then I'm prompted to, if I want to clear it or not. From here, what we do is we set up a little dialog using an alert button or alert, uh, alert window, that we go in and we set a message, we set whether uh, 